In the 1970s, Dr. Carl Gustafson excavated a, uh, a mastodon uh, in northwest Washington. And this site is known as the Manus Mastodon site. And at that particular site, he found a very important artifact, which is this specimen right here. And what this is, this is the rib of a mastodon. And you can see the articulated end here. This is where it would articulate to the vertebra here. And, but what was important about this rib fragment is if you look at it, there's something protruding out of the rib itself. And this was interpreted by Gustafson as being a bone projectile point. Um, he did a, a very early x-ray of this in the 70s. It was kind of fuzzy, but it did show that it extended down into the bone uh, of the rib. And uh, he also did radiocarbon dating of charcoal around the specimen, around the mastodon itself, and determined that the site was roughly around 14,000 years old, or approximately 1,000 years older than Clovis. Uh, after publication of that information in the 70s, the site was questioned as to also whether this was really a bone projectile point or not. Well, in this week in the journal Science, uh, what we did is we got a team together, uh, myself and colleagues from various universities and organizations, and we, we did several things uh, to the Manus specimen. We redated it with radiocarbon, we did CT scanning, and we also did DNA and protein analysis. The radiocarbon dating shows us we took radiocarbon samples from the rib itself as well as other bones from the mastodon, shows that the mastodon dates to 13,800 calendar years before present or approximately 800 years before the start of Clovis. The CT scanning that we did, which yielded slices going across the bone, showed that there was a, that this uh, actual specimen extends into the bone about two and a half centimeters, and that the, the object itself is shaped to a point, intentionally shaped, and definitely is the tip end of a bone projectile point. So it's embedded about two and a half centimeters, and then about a centimeter sticks out of the bone. Now, the, the original bone projectile point, this is a replica from Florida of a bone projectile point that dates to the Paleo-Indian time period. This probably is similar to the size of the bone point that was uh, used to kill the Manus specimen because we know this because given the location of this rib that uh, the hide would have been here and it would have had this bone point would have had to puncture through about 20 to 25 centimeters worth of tissue and muscle to eventually become embedded within the rib itself. Now the next thing that we wanted to do is we wanted to find out what was the bone point made out of. So what we did is uh, Eski Willerslev and his organization in Denmark uh, looked at the DNA and bone protein of the actual uh, bone point here and discovered that it was made out of mastodon bone. What that told us was is that the bone point, you know, was that these people that killed this particular mastodon, the Manus mastodon, must have killed at least one other mastodon to harvest the bone to make a tool or at least, you know, scavenge some bone from another mastodon to make a tool. So. In a nutshell, what we're looking at here is we're looking at another pre-Clovis locality in North America where in this case bone weaponry was used to uh, hunt mastodons 800 years before, you know, Clovis stone weaponry such as this show up on the landscape. And what the Manus site is showing us is that uh, it's just adding to additional information to tell us about, you know, the earliest people that occupied the Americas before Clovis. In, in the movies that you're about to see, you're going to see two movies. The first movie is a, uh, is a CT scan movie of the raw images. And what these are, these are slices that were made, uh, high quality digital x-ray slices made by an industrial grade CT scanner. Uh, each one of these slices is about uh, 0.06 millimeters apart, so about the thickness of a paper perhaps best way to envision this. And as you look at the movie, what you'll see is you'll see the exterior of the bone come into view. Then all of a sudden you'll see this spongy kind of network or mass, and that's the interior portion of the bone. And then as you continue through the movie, you'll see a white mass show up, a dense white mass sticking into the bone at about a 45 degree angle. And what you're seeing there, that's the bone point coming into view and then you'll see it disappear and go to the other opposite end of the bone. So we're just taking slices as we go across the bone. And then the second movie 
is a reconstruction based on those CT scans where they take the CT scans and turn it into a 3D movie where you can see the exterior portion of the uh, rib, the, the portion of the projectile point which is sticking out of the rib, the flat surface, undulatory surface represents the skin of the bone, and then you're looking at the interior showing what the point looks like as you see it uh, extending down uh, to a point. One thing you'll notice is that the tip end is broken and has been moved slightly off to the side. This is fairly typical what happens when a projectile enters uh, something like a bone. Typically the tip will break off and rotate to the side. We see this with stone projectile points and we're actually seeing it here with the, with the manis bone specimen.